Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris from Worldwide Camera Exchange. Hasselblad Super Wide Series cameras, SWC, SWCM, uh, 903 SWC, 905 SWC. Probably one of the most iconic film cameras ever built. Uh, this Leica M3, Leica M6, Hasselblad 500CM, probably all in the top five if you're looking at the most iconic, most popular, most highly regarded film cameras. I'm going, to, I'm going to spend just a few minutes now talking about this, talking about the variants, and in particular focusing on what is probably one of the best lenses ever built. Okay, so how's about SWC? SWC, SWCM, um, 903, SWC and 905 SWC. Fundamentally very, very simple cameras. You have a wide angle lens, a dedicated wide angle lens attached to a very slim body. The body is really just there to allow the back to be attached. Um, on the top you have a viewfinder. The viewfinder is just for framing the scene. Uh, little bubbles as well on the later one that's in the viewfinder, on the early ones in the camera. The viewfinder allows you to frame. There's no focusing aid, so focusing is, is estimated. I mean, you can measure it obviously, but you'd usually just estimate because there's so much depth of field. Uh, a few inches here and there won't make that much difference. Uh, shutter release on the top, winds on crank there. Very, very basic camera body. On the lens itself, focusing, shutter speed, ring, and aperture ring. The, the, the lens layout is, is the same as you'd find on any Hasselblad lens. Okay, so what you're asking yourself now is why would you buy this camera, which in good condition costs anything between two and maybe four thousand pounds, why would you waste your money buying a, a dedicated wide angle, angle camera when you could buy instead this? A Hasselblad 40mm CF lens, which can go onto your existing system. Why? Why bother to spend thousands and thousands of pounds on a 38 millimeter fixed wide angle when you could instead buy a 40 millimeter Hasselblad lens, very, very good quality, and stick it on your existing camera? Well, there's a very, very good reason. This is a fantastic lens. As wide angles lenses go, this, this is right up there with the best. But in producing this, this camera, in producing the, the SWC, what Hasselblad did is what Hasselblad has always done. And what Hasselblad continues to do today with cameras like the X1D, I'll put a link up um, above for that, they produced a niche camera that serves its particular small group of photographers better than anything else available. This 38 Biogon is legendary. It is optically superb. Very little distortion, incredibly sharp, very little vignetting. It can be used full open without an issue. Very, very few chromatic aberrations or other optical aberrations. Optically, this lens is as good as it gets. Now, why is it so good? Why can't they have just put this lens on this camera? Good question. At this point, it gets a bit more technical, I'm afraid. This is a true wide angle lens. It is a non retrofocus lens. What that means is if you look at the rear element there, it's almost touching the film plane, which is pretty much where the, the, the rear of the camera is there. So the, 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 the rear element is almost on top of the film plane. Now in the 20s, 30s, 40s, generally speaking, optical designers to design wide angles as best as they could. And the best way to design a wide angle lens is to keep it simple. Uh, a symmetrical design where the rear of the element, the rear element of the lens is, is almost touching the film. Uh, an 18 mil, a 21 mil, they'll be just a few millimeters away from the film. Once you get up to 35 mils, you're, you're a bit further away from the film. Now that was fine when you had rangefinder cameras and press cameras and technical cameras. It didn't matter where the rear element of the lens was. But then in the 1950s, SLRs come along. This of course is an SLR. It has a mirror. There's the mirror. Now, when you've got a mirror, bounce up and down like that, what you can't have is a rear element a few millimeters away from the film plane because the rear element will clearly foul the mirror. That is the problem. So the only way of designing a, a wide angle lens to work with 
a mirror so to make to, to, to design a lens that maintains a, a large gap between its rear element and between the film is to use something called a retrofocus lens design. Now the, 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 the retrofocus lens design allows the lens effectively to be pulled this way. Retrofocus lenses are generally the lenses you find today on most cameras. They're very good quality but there is, a, there is a degree of compromise because to get that rear element to move away from the film plane, you've got to add more glass. And by adding more glass, you typically get, typically get a little bit more distortion, a few more, a few more aberrations. You might get a bit more vignetting, not a lot more, but just a bit more. So when the, when the SLR really took off in the 1950s and, and early 1960s, Wide angles, almost all without without exception, became retrofocus lenses with a little bit a little bit of fall off in optical design. So, as I mentioned earlier, Hasselblad being Hasselblad, doing what they do to the very very best of their abilities, said, "Okay, well, look, with this particular camera, with this wide angle camera, what we're going to do is have a non retrofocus lens design, a, a true wide angle lens." which is what the 38 Biagon is, to give our customers the very, very best in wide angle photography. So if you are a, an architectural photographer, for example, or you're a, um, an, a, a, a landscape photographer, you will really, really love this lens. What I'm going to do now quickly is just talk about the, 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 the variants of this camera. It's been made, for, it was, was made for 50, 50 plus years. There were a few, a few minor variants I'm just going to focus on the main ones. Camera was introduced as the um, Supreme Wide, then it was rebadged the Super Wide. Uh, earlier on, earlier on in the late 50s, early 60s, it had a chrome 38 Biagon lens that was not multi-coated. In the early 70s, they introduced the T the T Star coating, or Zeiss introduced the T Star coating, which was the multi-coating. So cameras bought from about 1971 will have a little red T, just like there. And a little red asterisk which shows that the, the optics are multi-coated. Still a 38 Biagon, but from 71 onwards it was a multi-coated 38 Biagon. That did make a difference in optical performance, reduced flare, that sort of thing, increased contrast. Um, through 1980s it was the CT star version which was the older more uh, more metallic version of the Hasselblad lens. I'll put a link up now explaining more about that. Early 90s moved on to the CF lens this is the CF lens, then ultimately onto the, um, the, the CFE, CFI Hasselblad lens design, which was the slightly chunkier, more slightly more plasticky lens. Cameras hard, the camera bodies hardly changed at all. When it went from the SWC to the CM, uh, it just allowed you to put a Polaroid back on, which these days is pretty irrelevant. Um, the later CF, CM, sorry, a later SWCM cameras also had an updated finder. This is the updated finder. It's a bit plasticky and has a bubble in the top. The older version was all metal and has a little prism here which allowed you to see the bubble in the body. So usually you'd see a metal finder with a bubble or a plastic finder um, without the bubble on the camera but with a bubble in the viewfinder. This is quite an unusual camera, and it was it was it was it was built in in, in this sort of crossover period. So this has a bubble both there and on the top, which happens to be a bit of a bit of an oddball. But there you go. The SWCM then became the 903 SWC, and ultimately the 90 ultimately the 905 SWC. Um, the later cameras are newer, probably more reliable. Um, if you're buying one of these things, I'd personally look at an SWCM with a CF lens, or or later if you can. What I will do is put a link up above just explaining what to check for if you're buying Hasselblad lenses. You've got to be careful with the optics because they are getting on a bit and you've got to be careful with the backs and the condition and all that sort of stuff. But click on the, um, click on the link above and um, I'll, explain, I'll explain more about that. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have any questions, please stick them in the boxes below and I'll answer if I can. Otherwise, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.